In this video, I wanna talk about something called run blocking. And I'm sure that you've seen this on your journeys of learning Kotlin, learning about coroutines. If you've watched pretty much any presentation online about coroutines, about Kotlin, got to the um, Kotlin documentation. So if you go to like kotlinlang.org and look at any of the tutorials or the guides, you pretty much always run into this thing called run blocking. So as a prime example here in front of me, I have this example, function main equals run blocking. Uh, and you can scroll down here and go into any part of the website and you'll, you'll see this multiple times. So what is this, what is this run blocking thing? The most common question I get is how does run blocking compare to coroutine scope and how does run blocking compare to a suspend function? So let's take a look at Android Studio here. So just so I'm explicit and you know exactly what I'm talking about, uh, how does run blocking compare to say a coroutine scope that is matched in, launched in any dispatcher, doesn't really matter, and how is it compared to a suspend function? That's the most common question I get about run blocking. So I'm gonna cut right to the chase, I'm not gonna waste any time here. First of all, I wanna say that run blocking is not like a suspend function a suspend function is a function that whose job is to do something and it can be run inside of a coroutine. Run blocking is more similar, much more similar to a coroutine scope. It is essentially a coroutine scope, but with special properties. And if you take a look at the function definition, so if I was just to hold down control and hover over run blocking and click on it here, I get taken to the function here. And if you read the first line in the definition, it says runs a new coroutine and blocks the current thread interruptibly until its completion. So essentially what, what run blocking is, is it's a coroutine scope. Like I can call suspend function in here I can get get a result no problem the difference here is that it will actually block the entire thread that it gets executed in until that job is complete so comparing that to a regular coroutine scope that's launching a coroutine that will launch a, a coroutine within that thread but you can launch many different coroutines inside that thread and they can all execute simultaneously. If I was to call run blocking, that blocks everything else in the thread that's going on until that specific job is done. Let's take a look at an example so you can see this in action. Okay, so I'm gonna delete run blocking and inside this coroutine scope here, I'm gonna write out uh, a bunch of results. So I'll say, uh, well, let's do a print line here first just to print the thread that we're running it in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the video ahead here so you don't have to just watch me type this out. So here we have a print line statement that's saying starting the job in some thread. Then I have a bunch of results. So you have, you have five results that are being retrieved. Result number one and then printing it. Result number two, printing that. And this, this get result function down here is just printing a randomly generated number from uh, one or zero to 99. And there's a 1000 millisecond delay before it actually returns the number. So it's just returning five, five things and they're gonna be executed one after another. So if I was to press shift F10 to run this app, let's take a look at the log and just see what kind of output we get here. Okay, so we get the main thread printing out and then the results kind of trickle in one second after another. So you can see them come in and that's because of that 1000 millisecond delay so each one runs and then the next one runs after that pretty straightforward so so what if we were to call run blocking within the same thread that these jobs are running that's that's kind of the the question at hand here so i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this the same way i'm going to do coroutine scope main and then launch whoops i need to specify that correctly so dot launch so i'm launching it the same kind of way so this this coroutine is going to launch at the exact same time as this coroutine and now inside here i want to do some other kind of work so i'll delay 1000 milliseconds that should allow result one to be returned and then i want to then i'm going to call run blocking and we're going to see what happens here now inside run blocking i'm going to write a couple of print line statements and a delay Okay, so blocking the thread, it'll print out the thread name, then it's gonna delay 4,000 milliseconds or four seconds, and then it's gonna say done blocking whatever thread. So now what's gonna happen when I run the app is both of these coroutines, this one could be like, you know, job number one. Uh, this one could be like uh, job number two. Whoops, job number two. They're both gonna launch at the exact same time and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm pressing shift F10 and let's take a look at the log output. So right away, it says starting job and main thread, we get result number one, and then it freezes. So you can see right there, it's stopping, then it says done blocking the main thread, and we get the rest of the results kind of trickling in. So this is a good way to showcase the difference between run blocking and a coroutine scope, because both of these are getting launched in the same thread, the main thread, the difference being when this one does launch, it blocks all other coroutines within that thread. You really, I can't really like, when it comes to Android, I can't see a use case when you would wanna use this run blocking thing. Cause no matter what dispatcher you used, whether you used IO, whether you used main, or you used any of the other dispatchers that are available, if you run run blocking, it's gonna stop 
all of the coroutines, all of the jobs, basically everything that's happening in that thread until that job is complete. The only time I can see you using it with, in regards to Android development is with testing. But even then, you know, if you're writing a JUnit test, there's other, you could just launch an actual coroutine inside of a scope. I don't see why you would use run blocking unless you specifically wanted to block the thread and make sure that nothing else was happening. I can't really see a good use case. So anyway, hopefully now when you read the documentation, you kind of understand what run blocking is all about. I think they only, they use it so much in the examples because it doesn't matter in the examples that they're blocking the whole thread. They are just doing an example. I still think it's kind of strange because why wouldn't you just use some other coroutine scope? But if you know something that I don't know, please leave a comment below because I'm having a hard time understanding why they use this in like all of their examples on the uh, Kotlin, the Kotlin website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.